Okay, so let's try this one more time, okay? Okay, so listen to, listen to what the words that are coming out of my mouth, okay? So, if the temperature of a gas sample is increased from 20 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius, what, what do we already know about the gas sample, guys? So we know T1 and T2, right? What are they? 20 degrees Celsius is what? It's T1, right? Because why? It's that it increased from 20 to 40 degrees Celsius. Everybody's like, 293, right? What? <laughs> Okay, what's T2 again? 40 degrees, 40 degrees Celsius. So, it also says the volume um, was found to increase, um, we'll say, by seven, we'll, we'll say to seven liters, okay? The volume is found to increase to seven liters, 7.0 liters, we'll say, okay? So, what is that going to be? Is that going to be V1? V2, right? So 7.0 liters. So we're looking for V1, right? We'll just say that's like that. So now we can use Celsius in this problem, but normally you're going to want to convert them to Kelvin, okay? So let's just get in the habit of converting everything to Kelvin, okay? So how do we convert this to Kelvin? Add 273. Add 273. So 20 plus 273 is 293 kilo, okay? So this will be sig okay, that we're using here. 40 plus 273 is 313 kilo, okay? So um, let's use our ideal gas law, PV. NRT, remember 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, P2, V2, and 2, R, T, 2, okay? So, um, bless you. What changed? Did P change? No, right? So what can we do to it? What can we do to it? Cancel it, right? Did V change? Yes. So can we cancel it? No. No. Did N change? No. no. What is N again? The amount of gas, or the number of moles, usually. Um, it is the amount, but usually you'll see it in the number of moles. R, does it ever change? No. no. And did T change? Yes. Yes. Okay. So our new uh, law is V1 over V2 equals T1 over T2. Right? So that is called Gay-Lussac's law. Okay? It's usually, uh, you'll see it written, um, oh, well, this is actually Charles' law. <laughs> so we're doing a Charles' law problem again. Sorry about this. But let's just do another Charles' law problem. Um, so again, like I said before, you'll see it usually written V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Okay? But we can plug those in. This is a good one because we're now solving for the initial volume. Okay? So, what are we looking for? What variable do we want to isolate here, guys? V1. Okay? So, um, how do we do that? It's an easy one to do, right? All we got to do is multiply both sides by V2, right? Like that. So, we've isolated V1 and it's on the top, right? That's all that matters. Okay, so V1 equals T1, V2 over um, T2, right? And so now what do we do? Plug and chug, right? Same thing, every time. So T1 is 293 Kelvin. Um, V2, 7.0 liters. T2, 313 Kelvin. You guys got those on your own, right? Cancel out your K's. Cancel out your Kelvins. And what do we get? Liters. We're cool. Um, 6.5. Okay. <coughs> well, let, let me figure it out, too, because I haven't done this one before. Times 7 divided by 313. And so, since you're going to do it to 
two sig figs there, it's going to be actually 6.6 .6 liters, right? And the last thing you want to ask yourself, usually on these ones, is does this make sense, okay? So, it says here, the temperature went from small, smaller number to a bigger number, right? Would you expect that the volume went from a smaller to a bigger thing? Yeah, is this smaller than 7.0? Is V1 smaller than 7.0? Yes, right? So that would be like, if you want to think about it backwards, if you put a balloon in the refrigerator, right, you would think it would shrink, right? Or if you put a balloon in a, you know, heated up a balloon, like a hot air balloon, it's going to expand. And that's what this is doing, right? You're heating up a balloon and it's expanding. So you always want to take chemistry not just from in the classroom, you know, but you want to take it from... Think about chemistry as all around us, you know what I'm saying? And just think about what happens in the real world. Okay, we can kill them. Unless there are any